What's going on everybody? It's Patrick from Purple Park Studios and today I want to share with you a couple tips about HDRIs that will take your renders to the next level. So let's go. So what we can do is we can hop into our shading tab and we'll go to rendered mode right here. And I'm just going to go ahead and switch this over from object to world. And this is my setup for the HDRI. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just delete hit X so I have a blank slate to work with here and I'm just going to hit new and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit shift a and I'm going to search for environment texture so I'll select this and I'll connect the color up to the color and we need to add an image so I'll left click on open and I'll navigate into my computer to where I have an HDRI saved that I'd like to use so I'm picking this one right here. It's from textures.com. It's Norway Valley B. I'm not sure if this is the one that I actually use in the scene, but I'm just going to use this one anyway for demonstration purposes. So when I first open up the HDRI, this is what it looks like. And if I look through my camera mode here, that doesn't look too bad, but we can definitely get this looking a lot better. So one of the first things I like to do is select my environment texture right here and hit control T which is the Node Wrangler add-on. And if you don't have that enabled, you can go up to Edit Preferences and just search under Add-ons for Node Wrangler. And it should pop up here. And if it's not checked, just make sure you check it. And then you should have this add-on enabled. So you just select this and hit Control T. And then you'll get this texture coordinate and mapping node right here. And right here is where a lot of the fun begins. So you can actually scale your HDRI um, and by holding down the left mouse button and dragging down and then scrolling, you can scale all out at once, but we don't really need the scale as much. What we're mostly going to be focused on is the location and rotation. So for example, if I move this out up and down on the Z, you can already see right here, that's already looking a little bit better. And then if I move it on the Y and the X as well, I'm going to control Z and undo those. So you can also play with the rotation here. And this will really help affect your scene because you can rotate it to the right angle of sunlight to get the best lighting for your scene. Like already right there, that's looking pretty sweet. And then I can move this up and down on the Z. You can hold and shift to get a more precise movement. And so here almost it now almost looks like I'm in a desert. So even though I'm not using a desert environment, there's just a lot of cool stuff you can do to get your shot to look a lot better. And you can scroll out on the X for more of like a wide angle type shot. And then back on the Z a little bit. And as you're scrolling, you can just keep in mind making a mental note of things that look good so you can know what to go back to and stuff. And you can also change the scale as well. So I'm gonna control Z back to something like this because I think this looks pretty sweet. Now, another thing I like to do with the HDRIs is you can hit Shift A and you can search for a hue saturation node, or I'm sorry, hue saturation value, and you drop that in there and you can play with the saturation. So sometimes desaturating your scene just a bit to like maybe 0.1. Um, so already there, that's starting to look a bit more realistic. And then you can see that the orange and red colors here are really popping and you can turn the you can change the hue value as well, but the hue value will mostly work better when you have your saturation up to one. And you can even turn the saturation up to two to be a little bit harder, but the hue value here, you can start to change the entire color of your scene. So it's kind of like a quick, like if you want to get it more of a desert look, maybe something like that, and then drag the saturation back a bit. Something like that actually looks pretty cool. And then by cranking up the value, that'll just make it a little bit brighter or darker. So you could dial your scene in a bit that way too. That actually doesn't look too bad. I might have to bring the contrast down in post-production. But I think for right now, leaving it here is fine. And then there's the factor zero and one, just how much of that effect you want in there. So those are some of the two ways that you can quickly get your scene looking a lot better by adding in that environment texture and then adding the node wrangler with texture coordinate and a mapping node, playing with some of the values in the rotation and the location, and then maybe also popping a hue saturation node in between the environment texture and the background. So yeah, guys, I hope this video was helpful. If you found it helpful, don't forget to give it a like and leave a comment, and I'll see you guys in the next video.